Stark State College Massage Therapy Lab Notes with Michael Vigila, Licensed Acupuncturist and Licensed Massage Therapist. Okay, so the neck and shoulder massage, this is generally where you will begin your massage. And it starts with passive touch on the side of the head. So in passive touch, the hands gently and comfortably rest along the side of the head. This is a good time for you to just take a nice deep breath and relax. Center yourself, connect with your patient. And then from there, you'll go into digital kneading on the neck and the base of the occiput. Now I'm gonna do that on her here, but then I'll bring my hands out from under the neck so you can actually see what I'm doing. But initially, I'm pressing up and into the spine. When you get to the base of the occiput, you do digital kneading, small circular motions, using the index finger or maybe the index and middle fingers along the base. So this is what it looks like underneath her neck. These two fingers are pressing up. They're creating an extension and a little bit of traction. It's kind of a rolling motion. So you dig up into the <coughs> neck and you come down. Move up a little bit into the neck and come down. Move up a little bit into the neck. And it's just a nice rhythmic rolling, pressing up into the, the tissues. Remember that digital kneading is pressing the muscles into the underlying bone. So the underlying bone in this case is the spine. So as you press up, you, you press those muscles into the spine, the transverse processes, and then you just roll out of it. So it's, it's a rolling extension and tractioning movement. When I do it on her, I'm just starting as low as I can at the base of the spot of the neck, up and in, shift a little up and in, shift a little up and in. And traction is an important part of this. <coughs> then the digital kneading at the base of the occiput is again just the index or maybe the index and middle finger pressing in small circular motions into the base of the occiput. Move out a little bit and again, move out a little bit and again. And what that looks like here is this. So you really can't see what I'm doing as far as the hands because obviously they're under the head. But you get the sense that there's these small circular motions through there. And then I would usually do that extension, traction, lift, that digital kneading into the base of the neck, through the neck and the base of the skull, two or three times to start. And you have not applied any lubricant yet. Then from here you're going into kneading of the upper trapezius. And in this case, I would recommend that you use your fists and press down, bottom out, press down, bottom out. So you just sink slowly into the tissues until you hit tissue resistance and you bottom out. So this is just all warming up. We have not used any lubricant yet. So those are the first three things that you do then maintaining contact with their shoulder put a little lubricant on your hands and now you're going to apply friction with lubricant you're going to come across the upper chest down the shoulders a little bit along the sides and then gliding up the neck so across the upper chest you can even go down comfortably as far as the elbows if you can reach that far. Slide up and up the neck. And again, one more time, friction through here. As you come along the, the sides of the arms, you, you'll scoot your hands under the person so you can glide along the neck. And again, you may not be able to see that 
because it's happening underneath. From there now we're going to do petrissage of the upper trapezius and the one thing that's important about this is that you're actually grasping the tissue of the upper trapezius and that your fingers are underneath and your thumb is on top. So it's compressing <coughs> like this. Don't turn that around, it will be very uncomfortable and hard on your wrists. So I would alternate sides, grasp, compress, lift. So this is petrissage of the upper trapezius. And then after you've done that a few times, again, friction is the alternate movement between meeting. So a couple friction strokes. And then the specific friction that we're going to do, we're going to use the thumb and doing one side at a time glide through the upper trapezius. You can do that in a couple different segments and I'll show you what I'm doing. So the upper trapezius is here and I'm gliding my thumb through there. So it's a much more specific deep friction through the upper trapezius. And just do one side at a time. The other hand is just stabilizing the head. And then go over and do the other side. And you can use fairly firm pressure here, but notice the person's responses. If they wince or if they pull away, that's too much pressure. Also, you may feel that you flip over something that feels like a hard structure. Sometimes people mistake this for a muscle knot. It is the superior angle of the scapula. So if you feel you flip over something there that feels very hard, don't make the mistake of thinking that there's a muscle knot there that you have to work out. That's a bone. You will not work that out. So after you've done the, the deep friction with the thumb, then go back and find the point, usually about the center of the trapezius, where it feels the thickest or the most congested, and you're going to apply some pressure touch there. And all you're going to do is just sink in deeply, but again, not fast. Don't go in as far as you possibly can, just until you feel tissue resistance and hold that. And, and I just want to make a little subtle correction there. I would integrate that in with the friction. In other words, I would do the friction first with the thumb, and then before going to the other side, I would do that deep pressure touch and then go over to the other side. So that way it's a little more seamless in terms of its integration. So you're doing the friction. And as you do this friction, you can assess the tissue. And you say, OK, right about there feels a little thick or congested. So there's where I'm going to slowly sink in and hold. Again, you're not doing this in a trigger point fashion where you really need feedback from the patient at this point. There will be a time when we're doing trigger points where that is necessary. So we've done deep specific friction on the upper trapezius. We've done the pressure touch. Now we again end with friction across the upper chest, down the arms, up the back of the arms. I even reach under the neck a little bit or under the upper back and to traction that. And then you can end that with passive touch. So you end the same way that you began. And also it's just a momentary pause before you'll then be going to the right arm. So that's what's on your notes, but I want to then add to that saying Think in terms of being able to mix and match all of those maneuvers that we just demonstrated. So you can put this in wherever you like. You can repeat the petrissage. You can do just gliding up the neck. 
you can do this again. So if you want to spend more time on the neck and shoulders, which I often do, I don't necessarily just do it in the order that I just demonstrated it. I mix and match, do some friction, do some more petrissage, do some more stretching and tractioning, do some larger friction. Initially, it's probably good to just do it as it is on your notes. But when you get out into the real world, here I am doing the kneading to the upper trapezius with the fists that we started with, but I'm putting that in the middle of the routine now. So the order is there as an initial learning tool, but then feel free to mix those in any way that makes sense to you. Also, it's good as you glide up the neck to traction it a little bit. And then finally, when you are done with all that, do end with passive touch.